Hey guys, what's up? Denvito Chips here and welcome to an all new episode of Denvito Gaming. Today I'm gonna be giving you my personal review of Metroid Dread for the Nintendo Switch. I'm super excited to crack this open. But before we jump in, please be sure to like this video, subscribe and comment when you're done. Here is my review of Metroid Dread. Without a doubt, Metroid Dread is probably one of the best games I've ever played. And that's saying a lot, because I play a lot of Nintendo video games. This one tops the charts by all standards. It's incredible. It took me roughly 15 hours of gameplay to get through it, which really isn't all that bad. I like to consider myself a intermediate gamer when it comes to Nintendo games. And this one kept me busy. I mean, it was pretty awesome how much time I was able to spend exploring the world, playing the maps and levels, going against bosses. It felt nostalgic for me. It brought back a lot of that childlike wonder and excitement for me of beating the next boss and discovering the new world and getting to the next level. It was really cool. That said, every video game has its pros and cons. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the pros and cons for you guys and then give you my final rating on Metroid Dread. Here are the pros. Even though I've never played a game in this series before, I've always been an avid Super Smash Bros. brawler, and Samus Aran was always one of my all-time favorite characters. This game does this girl bounty hunter justice. It is such an awesome adventure game. You're constantly finding new items, destroying new types of aliens, discovering new places on this planet that you're on. So if you come from uh, being a fan of the Metroid Prime games, or if you're a fan of this current series of Metroid games, which is like the two 2D scroller Metroid games. I think you're gonna love it. Another thing that the game has going for it is that it is absolutely gorgeous and not just by Nintendo Switch standards. I mean, there were moments where I felt like I was looking at a piece of artwork and a lot of that comes from the fact that because it is a 2D scroller, they're able to put a lot more attention to detail in the backgrounds because you're moving across this one scene, this one level, and the background is just shifting perspective. And so it really gave you a lot of time to appreciate all the crisp visuals all the gorgeous animation, uh, all the colors. I mean, it was just a gorgeous, beautiful video game to look at, which makes it a piece of artwork in its own right, in my opinion, so that was really cool. Another thing that I loved about it was the gameplay. It was so smooth and addictive. It was one of those games where I couldn't wait to pick up my controller back up because I wanted the feel of playing that game again. It's like every swirl, every jump, every power up, every pulsar blast, every grenade, every boss fight, even though those were like challenging and horrifying at times, it felt great great to be able to pick up the game and play it each and every single time, so it was pretty great. The last thing I loved about this game was that it gave you so much to do. There's all these different things that you have to find, discover, explore, and not only that, it's not as if that Metroid Dread is a side quest game because everything that you discover and find helps you in your quest to beat the next boss, to get to the next place. It just gave me so much to do. I felt like I was never bored. I loved that about the game and it made it even better. Any good game also has its cons. And so without further ado, the cons. Despite how fun the game was to play, I did find myself running to Reddit <laughs> several times, actually constantly throughout the whole game because there were some moments when you're on a map and you're at a particular place, the puzzle solving is so excruciatingly painful. I had no idea where I was going. Now, eventually, as you play, you're gonna learn you have to be heavily reliant upon the map that they give you in the game. If you don't know how to read the map, you're not gonna know where to go. But that said, before I knew that, I was so frustrated because I was just trying to figure out where I needed to go, where I needed to be, where the boss was. So that was the only thing I would say is that if you're a casual gamer, and I consider myself an intermediate gamer, um, it was really confusing at times. It could be a bit challenging. For some of us, that's part of the fun. For other people, it's enough to make them bash the game to pieces and get rid of it. So there's that disclaimer. Now this one could be a con or a pro for you depending on what kind of gamer you are. And the reason why I say that is because this is a game that's gonna have you going back to previous worlds that you've explored constantly. Throughout the game, you're always in this stance of having to go back to a previous world that you already explored and thought you conquered to go find another power up, to go defeat another hidden boss. So long as you're not against games where you have to retrace your steps and go back to the same places you came from, you're gonna love it. But if you're one of those people that prefers a more linear feeling gameplay and you just wanna get to the next level, to the next world and not look back, this isn't the game for you. 
and you're gonna end up really, really frustrated because half of this game is going back to where you were to find something else that you didn't know was there. So there's that. Now my last con and disclaimer is the fact that it can be more challenging than your typical video game. As I was researching the video game on Amazon and all these different sites and places, anybody that was grumbling or complaining about the game was complaining that it was way too difficult. And I'm gonna be honest, it was one of those games where I got stuck on the second boss for like two hours. It took me forever. If you're not the type of person that likes mining at bosses early on in the game, you're gonna hate it. Because I will say without a shadow of a doubt, it was this is one of the most difficult games I've ever played. If you're not wanting a game that feels like a Mario skinned version of Dark Souls, you're probably not gonna wanna play this game. But like I said, a lot of this is per your opinion. If you like a good challenge, this is gonna be one of the best games you've ever played. If you don't like a good challenge, and even more so than that, you don't like being punished for doing something wrong in a game, you're probably gonna have a really miserable time playing Metroid Dread. But all in all, I loved it. Which is why, as of this moment, I'm gonna give the game a nine. It was an incredible game. The gameplay was smooth and rapid. The visuals were lush. The storytelling was great. Samus Aran finally has another opportunity to kick some alien butt through this game. I mean, you could not ask for more. It was such a rewarding experience getting to play this game. And I would do it again. I would play it all again like 10 years from now. And there you have it. There is my Metroid Dread Nintendo Switch video game review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. What do you think of Metroid Dread? Have you played it already? Or is it a game that you've been on the fence about and waiting for someone to talk about it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, please be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching this brand new episode of Denvito Gaming. Take care and be blessed.